it is an on condition this transistor is conducting so here we have positive voltage in the top side so this positive voltage will flow from the transistor and they will reach here after that this winding this is feedback winding it will control the feedback circuit it will make a resultant magnetic field so this voltage will start here to here through this C7 capacitor it will go to this capacitor C5 capacitor so positive voltage this time we got voltage through this transistor to this this winding and this winding and this capacitor to negative terminal AC voltage here we get AC voltage here we take DC voltage these DC voltage are applied to standby power standby power will generate a fixed voltage this voltage will go to PC for the processor to make it reset and to take a power on command this power on command will come to this main power supply before that it is taking voltage but it is disabled it is on hold assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh welcome to civil electronics friends in this video we will discuss a computer power supply pc power supply that is called atx power supply this is a requested video from one of my valuable viewer so i am discussing in this video we will discuss the principle of operation how it is working how it works before repairing if we understand the principle if we have an idea how the circuit is working that time you can work very easily before going in deep I will make a block diagram of this power supply SMPS like a single simple power supply it have some sections filter and protection circuit then we have DC bus until here we have the same circuit after that we have two branches one is standby standby power supply and the same DC voltage are applied to main power supply this power supply it have its own power monitor system this a shot okay and this main power supply it will work when this power supply is working it will generate a PG signal power good signal this signal will go to PC and PC when annual anyone will power on after that and it will also make biasing or VCC this this will make VCC and from PC we take power on command from PC power on power off command it will come here then it will generate power different powers power supplies to PC okay and here we have regulators we have feedback circuit and this feedback is applied to main power supply this is our circuit here is also monitoring circuit filter and protection 
we take AC voltage, here we get AC voltage, here we take DC voltage, these DC voltage are applied to standby power, standby power will generate a fixed voltage, this voltage will go to PC for the processor to make it reset and to take a power on command, this power on command will come to this main power supply, before that it is taking voltage but it is disabled, it is on hold. When bicycle voltage are available and power on command is available, at that time this PC will, this main power supply will start working and when it will start working, it will generate power and this power will be rectified, regulated and will be supplied to PC. The same time, it will take feedback and it, there is a monitoring circuit. This feedback for regulation and monitoring circuit for overall voltage protection. In case of under voltage, it will go to stabilize and over voltage, it will shut down the power. So this is our power supply. Let's start. This time I am going to discuss TL494 power supply. It's very simple. This power supply have nothing. It's very simple. Just only we have we should have an idea how this circuit is working. It is our requirement. Before working on any circuit, we must know what is the circuit. Come here, line and neutral. We see here, line and neutral. After that, we have fuse. We have NTC. NTC, negative temperature coefficient resistance. It protects for instant current draw to the system. It limits the current for until a specific limit. After that, it goes regular. Then we have a capacitor for harmonics. Then we have a resistor, R1 resistor to make a tuned network. After that, we have a Z1 that's called voltage arrestor, MOV, metal oxide voltage arrestor. When it is available, it will monitor the over voltage. If any time we have over voltage, it will make internally short and it will cause to burn fuse. The fuse will burn and next circuit will protect it. Then we have capacitor and then we have dual line filter. We have one inductor and dual line filter. These are to protect over current, surge current. After that we have if some power supplies have this switch, 115 to 230 volt, 230 volt. If we have, that's okay. If we don't have, if we have that time, we have another additional voltage arrestor. It will also start working for 1110 operation, 110 operation. This power supply will arrive at the bridge. Here and here. Now from cathode, we will take positive voltage through inductor for regulation. We have C5 and C6, two capacitors here. Why we use two capacitors in SMPS? Because this SMPS is half bridge technology, where we use two capacitors and two transistors or two FETs, it is half bridge technology. So two resistors are also available here. These are just for discharging these capacitor when power is off they will give a very soft discharge this power is applied directly to this transistor this diode is reverse, reverse bias so this have no action so we have power at the collector of q1 and if we see this end emitter of q2 this time these transistors are off if here is FET MOSFET or if here is BJT, IGBT, anything, it depends upon the designer. So this circuit is in off condition. If we see this, this line, negative line and this positive line, if we see these two lines, the positive lines line is coming here at the transformer, primary coil. And if we see negative, so negative is reached here and in the 
feedback coil of this transfer and also it is applied to transistor filter and protection circuit here is filter and protection then we have DC bus DC bus is here then we have two power supplies standby and main power supply so this is our main power supply and this is our standby power supply standby power supply it is just only stand alone inverter circuit it have just oscillator it will make oscillation through this resistor network it have one two three four five six about seven to eight ten components it will make switching and this switching will cause to induce voltage in secondary of this transformer and here is a feedback circuit this coil will also make add-on to the transfer switching we will take output from the secondary secondary have two portions for our first coil the second coil the first coil it is about 12 volt power supply from D30 and we have 5 volt power supply from this D28 it's about 7 to 8 volt and this power is applied the upper voltage are applied to 7805 regulator linear IC and this unregulated voltage are supplied to pin number 12 or TL494 and also applied to through this resist 1k5 resistor through diode to the center tape of the primary of this T2 transformer then when this voltage are applied here VCC is here and ground line is connected to pin number 9 and 10 and 16 because ground is common okay this IC VCC is arrived here and we got 15 volt no, sorry 5 volt output regulated output from here and this regulated output we have also from R23 4k7 4.7k resistor this voltage will apply to on off run stop signal this signal will go to PC switch and then the same time the same voltage are applied to LN393 this is comparator voltage comparator if this power supply is ok it will take a regulated voltage here and it have its own reference so it will generate a good signal power good signal because here it have a reference from this voltage divider network and it takes feedback from pin number 13 as well that is on off control if this voltage this 5 volt signal is ok within limit it will compare with the reference with pin 5 and 6 of this IC and it will generate a power good signal loop back to pin number 2 3 4 is ground then it will generate a power good or PG signal it's also power good circuit so it will get give a PG signal this PG signal power good signal it will go to PC to initialize the processor to make a reset signal to the processor for power on so this circuit this signal must be available and these 5 volt must be available for power on this power supply 12 volt must be available at pin number 12 pin number 12 it must have 12 volt 10 to 12 volt and this circuit PG signal must be available to reset the PC if this voltage are good everything is good and we must take 5 volt that are through this resistor 4.7k resistor and these are these voltage are applied to the base of Q10 this voltage in normal case from this resistor and this resistor will apply to base of this capacitor base of this transistor and on this capacitor so in this case okay now 
this transistor will be positively biased. This NPN transistor, when it goes positive, it will go in off condition. When it is off, it will cause to open this transistor. So in that case, we will find voltage at pin number 13 that is power control on off control that is control, control pin of this IC. At that time this IC will disable it will not function. It will not function. So that time just only this supply is working until anyone will come and he will press on the power button on the CPU when he will press the power on button immediately this circuit will go down for 0 volt 0 volt to run and this 0 volt will cause voltage drop on the base of this transistor and this capacitor will slowly discharging when it will start slow discharge so it will cause a linear change in the pin number 30 so this IC will take a soft start and it will start oscillation from pin number 8 and pin number 11 how this circuit will work now pin number 8 will be applied to Q3 of this transistor and pin number 11 is connected to Q4 of this transistor and it have a bicycle resistor so this transistor will start switching these are the output pins here it will start if pin 8 is here at that time pin 11 will oppose it pin number 11 and pin number 8 this high level is low level so they are working opposite to each other and this switching will cause excitation in the primary of this transistor this transformer so it will start switching when it will start switching it will cause to induce voltage in the secondary the secondary if we see we have three portions of this secondary one two three if we see the first coil here is a phase indication so it will connect it to this diode capacitor resistor 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 and to the base of this transistor so this signal will be connected after rectification to the base and if we see the second side so these two windings are out of phase to each other so when this one is positive half cycle here will be negative half cycle so these windings are opposite so if here is positive half peak here is negative half peak so this transistor will in off condition when it is in on condition this transistor is conducting so here we have positive voltage in the top side so this positive voltage will flow from the transistor and they will reach here after that this winding this is feedback winding it will control the feedback circuit it will make a resultant magnetic field so this voltage will start here to here through this C7 capacitor it will go to this capacitor C5 capacitor so positive voltage this time we got voltage through this transistor through this this winding and this winding and this capacitor to negative terminal so now when the cycle will change at negative cycle this voltage will apply to this transistor because this is positive this side is negative when the cycle will change the negative portion this will positive this will negative so this voltage will apply to this transistor 
at that time it will go in off condition it will go in conductive state so the negative side if we see negative side this negative cycle will come in the same way at that time we will get voltage from C6 because this time we are using the negative line so the same time in one cycle we are sweep in the current current flow once here is negative current flow once here is positive current flow so we will take the voltage c5 and c6 c5 give voltage to cq1 and q1 will apply voltage to this trans transformer in the other condition c6 will con give a voltage here so we will take output in the secondary if we see secondary of this transformer this is main PFC this transformer this one is small transformer here here the small transformer is here this one it have its own transistor it have its own feedback circuit the second transformer this small transformer it is here this is signal transformer this one is power signal power so this power transformer is main transformer PFC it will give voltage in the output and we have diode a rectified diode so here we will find the voltage in the output because this is half half bridge half bridge SMTS technology so we take a full current mode because two transistor two FETs and two capacitors are used to take maximum current this technology is used to maximum current so we will take voltage from these two diodes and inductor for filtration and after that we have output then the second section is same the third section is the same fourth fifth plus 12 plus 5 minus 5 minus 12 plus 3 volts every section have its output its regulation circuit its rectification circuit meanwhile this 3.3 volt section this is processor voltage it have an external and additional voltage stabilizer that is 3.3 volt regulator this regulator these these voltage are monitored by feedback circuit it is also monitored and it have an additional voltage regulator circuit here that is comprises voltage reference Q13 transistor and PNP transistor and it will also make a smooth regulation and this line is connected to motherboard through the connector and it will 3.3 stabilization circuit will control this circuit and it will make a parallel regulation to this voltage now if we come here we have one line if we see this line is connected to this capacitor and plus 5 volt plus 5 volt section is main section of our power supply and if you see this negative line we have also negative and 5 volt all power supplies are monitored for feedback this line is connected to sense 5 volt and minus 5 and the second line is connected to plus 12 minus 12 and it will check the feedback here is a summing point so this summing point will cause to this summing voltage applied to pin 1 of this IC pin 1 is feedback circuit here is uh, external programming resistor and capacitor to fix a switching frequency 
but pin 1 is always monitored to adjust the voltage level. If any voltage will go up or down, this SMPS controller will change its pulse width through pin number 8 and pin number 11. Pin number 19, 9, 10 is ground, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, these are programming components. Pin number 16 is ground, 13, 14, 15 are connected to each other and they are the control pins. They are working as a remote switch, as a remote control. So we will now see the remote control. We discussed this circuit. This is 3.3 volt regulated for regulator for processor voltage. Now, and this pin is to monitor the voltage level. If any voltage level is going up or down, this SMPS controller will try to adjust the voltage within limit, and it will change the pulse width. So it because the switching frequency is fixed. So it will change its pulse width to adjust the voltage in any case, in any condition. If the voltage go upper limit, from the upper limit, if 15 volt, sorry, 5 volt go up over voltage, negative 5 volt, neg negative 12, plus 5, plus 3.3 volt, any time, any voltage will go above the limit, this circuit will immediately activate. If we see, here are many components. This resistor, this Zener diode resistor, this resistor, Zener diode, Zener diode resistor, it is a complete. Here we have a resultant voltage here that is summing point at the D27 and D9. And these voltage are, if we see, directly coupled to Q6 transistor base. When any voltage, any one voltage will go above the limit, this transistor will conduct. And when it will conduct, it will cause to change the voltage level of Q6. And Q6 will immediately control the control pin from this transistor here is power on power on condition in power on condition this line will work on off condition this line will work and we have an other parallel line and this line will connect it at the same point where the power on off condition if the power supply is on anyone he tries to power on and it is powered on. The same time, if any power supply is above the limit, what will happen? The power supply will turn on, then it will go to off condition. That time, our this circuit is activated. Two conditions. If we power on, the fan will start running and then it will go off. We have two reasons. The first, we have this signal missing, interlock is missing because at the first step it is powered on, then the CPU will make interlock to turn on permanently until the power off condition will arrive here and it will go to power plus 5 volt and that time it will off. The second condition, if any voltage, any volt, any supply is out of limit, above limit, if any supply is above then the specified voltage, that time this pin will also disabled and it will also disable the power good signal. The same time we have, it is also working as a VCC of this IC. Pin number 8 is VCC. So this VCC will take voltage from pin number 13 also. Any power supply is off that time power good signal will off, CPU will off, the processor will off. So we have now some situations. 
our fuse is burning we have problem here we have no voltage power supply is not turning on what we will do first we have to check this 5 volt from this green pin green pin then we have to check the VCC pin number 12 of this IC this is TL494 if 494 have good voltage it should work we have to check this on off voltage if you connect this voltage to ground this green pin to ground pin number 13 must be change the voltage if it is changing voltage our this circuit is working if we connect we have 5 volt here but when we connect it make sure to the ground and the voltage are not change, changing here then we have to check Q1, Q10 and this circuit then if we have any voltage out of limit any power supply out of limit we have to check the capacitor the resistors and this one if we have fluctuation in voltage the voltage are not regulated then we have to check the feedback circuit i think this video is good for you if this video is good for you you can like subscribe and share and if you want to watch my future videos press the bell icon button if you want if, if this video is good you can share maybe someone can take benefit from this video assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh